Hi everyone. Let's start. So let me explain why. So some time ago, oh, not some time ago, I always loved building stuff. Uh, usually using code. I'm incompetent of carpentry or something like that, so code is pretty nice for me. Uh, but I found it very frustrating from time to time because sometimes I've built a bug and found out that found it out two months later or wasn't aware what happened or I changed very very small thing and had to check the whole application or ho my whole pet project uh, for that one small change. I presume that everyone knows a slide like this or was in a situation where you fix one bug and have two more or something like this or this <laughs> so yeah uh, unfortunately if you're one of these people you're really gonna hate this talk <laughs> so what I wanted is to be better I wanted a less, frustra f less frustrating environment, the one that I enjoy coding and actually producing something nice. I want to find bugs when I do them, not later. So I started writing tests. But now I had to run them every time. Every time I change something, I have to run all of the tests. But probably the biggest hassle is to make others run them, because it's really the it's really depressing that you spend time building quality and then your, f then your colleague doesn't care and just breaks everything and you're doing your feature and you have to fix his or hers test. So I wanted automation. Let's, like, when I, when s when I do something, let's check it. Uh, I want to be feature at the list of smaller changes. I don't want to deploy big features anymore. I want to cut it down and deploy it early. I want to push changes often so my colleagues can check only those changes, not the whole feature. It's much better for quality to ask for opinion on a small thing. They're actually easier to merge in because you have to you are avoiding big merges where you have a feature for six months but of course, the application that you are building moved on because five people are doing their own projects. Uh, you can also pull changes off them. So you can check how the current website is working with your features. This is called, and I found out that this is called the continuous integration. Anybody using continuous integration? Nice. So, I had changes done. They are on master, trunk, whatever uh, code uh, management software you use. Tests verify that everything is okay. I shipped it to master. So now I can deploy it whenever I want. Literally. My, my feature can be on the production branch. We can go for a beer and then just deploy it. Or you can deploy my feature. It's ready. It's there. It doesn't have to break anybody else. So this is con called continuous delivery. Anybody using continuous delivery as a principle? OK. Bit less. OK, but now that the changes are waiting on master, what I found was that uh, we have a we we're doing pull review uh, peer reviews, so that two people have to say, well, this is okay. So it takes time to do it, and I have to wait for uh, stuff to get merged, deployed, and everything else. And I really want to continue with my work. I didn't want to be bothered by deploying stuff. We can have merge storms. 
that means that usually people will merge stuff in the morning when they come to the office after lunch when they when they are not yet back to their work and at the end of the day so what tends to happen is that at maybe 10 minutes you have 10 pull requests to merge in and to deploy why wouldn't we just ship it so it's on master we have a build let's just ship it that's called continuous deployment anybody using it uh, okay a few hands any questions on the continuous part what uh, what it what each one means okay so welcome my name is Miros Vertan I'm senior developer in ticket swap you can find me on Twitter by M Svartan and I'm going to talk about some circ uh, some continuous integration tools today for PHP there are actually a lot of them uh, these are some of the most popular ones I pres anybody heard of any of them okay anybody heard of all of them oh nice so one issue that I had is which one to pick. There are so many. So through the last four years, I've been playing with Jenkins, Circle, and Redis. Some for my pet projects, some for the, my professional life, the companies that I work in. So which one to pick? This talk, I will try to uh, try to uh, say why and some of the uh, pros and cons of them to try to explain why would you use some of them because there are peculiar differences between them some people might not find them interesting some people might find them critical so how many of you are working in a small startup or small company where you don't have ops people okay or maybe you just don't have resources. Uh, maybe you're renting stuff like, well, we're on Amazon, DigitalOcean, Azure, or wherever, or just rent servers, uh, you, or outsource infrastructure. It's not your core business. You don't want to have ops people and take care of that. You can use CircleCI or CI. They're software as a service platforms, so you need them and they give you the resources. But maybe you have to keep it home. How many of you have to keep stuff at home? Like we have a big firewall and nothing can go behind it. Okay, few of you. Yeah, so maybe, maybe that's not the reason. Maybe you just have already a, whole, a big DevOps team or ops team. Uh, you want to keep, give them work or they can help you out with that. Maybe you're just paranoid. Jenkins is the tool for you. It's an open source platform. It's an open source software that you can install to your own servers and use free of charge. It's really easy to install. It's going to take you probably a bit under an hour. And you will need some plugins. Like you want to integrate to GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, or whatever uh, code uh, source management software you use. But there's also two options. Circle CI and Travis CI also uh, have enterprise on-premise software that you can buy and then install locally. But I neither have run them like that nor know the price of it. So can't help on that. OK, so who here? wants to play with continuous integration but never had the time or resources okay only few of you so for a small company or a team or maybe a solo developer that has a code on a private github repo so you don't want to share your uh, business application with others and you want to 
a painless dive into the world of automation or just want to check what this continuous means, Circle CI is my suggestion. So why? It's really easy to set up. The registration will take you like a minute. So all you have to do is click sign up, register with your GitHub, uh, GitHub uh, OAuth token. That's it. You want to add a new project. It'll take you less than a minute. It's free clicks. They will import your GitHub projects, give you a list, and you can just say, build this, 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 and this. Uh, but your project will need something to run the actual tests. You ha you'll have some definition there. So what you'll have to do, for instance, is this five lines of circle YML file. It will say which PHP version to run and what how to actually run the tests. That's it. It's actually going to run Composer uh, by itself if there's a Composer JSON. If you have the npm, J uh, m the package JSON for npm, it's going to run npm install there too. So what will you s you will see is the build page. Circle CI has a page. This is when everything is okay. So it says, okay, I installed this, I installed that, I exported something. I'm running tests. So if you're actually interested, you're usually not interested in each of the steps, but you can click on any of them and just see what happened there. If something failed, it will look like this. It will be open, but instead of the green line, it will have a red line. So it's really easy to see where something broke or what are some of the details there. But now we come to the pricing because it's a software as a service. So they have to earn some money. For private projects, what we offer, so they support both and private projects. For a private project, they one container free. So you can run and build at one time, free. If you have a bigger team and one build is not $50 per For public projects, they actually offer four containers for free. And additionally, if you need more, you can pay for more. Same price. Let's say that you want to run multiple versions of your test. So in by multiple versions. Test the same code using multiple language versions. Let's say you have a library. OK, sorry, but. Can you hear me? OK. Sorry, it's losing sound. So let's say that you want to test your code using multiple PHP versions. Or maybe using different databases. You want to try PostgreSQL or some other uh, database. Let's say it's the Travis is the best solution. So let's have a simple example of why would you use it. Let's say that you have your own ORM. And you have multiple projects. So some of them are in PHP 5.3, 5.4, 5, 6, and the new 7, maybe even HHVM. And it's an ORM. It has to talk to different databases, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, MSSQL. Sorry for the last. So you can set up Travis. OK, yeah, registration, just like for Circle, it's going to take a minute. Adding new project is also less than a minute. And also in your project, you have to set up the Travis YML file. And what you, have, what you do actually here is define all the PHP versions that you want your build to run on and all the database versions that you want it to run on. So what actually is going to happen is that for PHP 5.4, it's going to run all of the databases as a separate build, each of them. But also for MySQL, it's going to run all of the PHP versions. So what you get is a Cartesian product. 
So this would be 12 runs. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that the composer install is actually needed. And for the script part, for the test part, you just say which one you want to run, PHP unit. That's it. What it's going to do is this Cartesian uh, product. Sorry, I'm not sure if you can see. So it's running all of them separate. Uh, this is actually my friend's ORM project. Don't ask me why is he doing it like that. Uh, so he gets to test all of the versions on all of the PHPs. And it's really good for him. This is the job page. I'm not sure if the people in the end can see it. Sorry, it's a bit slow, uh, low resolution. So this will show you what happened in the build, in the job, sorry. OK, again, software as a service. They need money. For private projects, you can get 100 builds free, not per month. To test it out in the trial, you can get 100 builds for free to see if you like it. Then they have $130 per month for two concurrent jobs, 250 for five, 500 for 10. But they also support public projects with four concurrent jobs for free. Uh, but for free jobs, you cannot pay more to get more containers. Also, there's a bit of a difference between the public and the private. So they use separate websites. So if you have public and private projects in your company, for private ones, you'll have to use one site, for, pri uh, for public, the other. It's a bit tricky, and I, I don't like that part a lot. But on the private one, the waiting queues are much, much lower than on the public. Anybody using a Travis CI for their public open source project something? How do you like their queue times? OK. So, but sometimes you want customizable jobs. What does it mean? That on every build, you actually want multiple jobs inside different jobs. Like in one, you want to just check code quality. So the preparation of the setting up of the project is totally different than if you want to run browser tests. Let's say that you, you have Selenium to run. Actually, setting up Nginx and everything else will take much more time, and you don't need it for code, code quality checks. So Travis actually supports a similar thing to that uh, multiple PHP versions to have actually multiple different jobs inside one build. But maybe you want customizable builds so that every push has multiple builds on it. So you can get a similar thing to what Travis actually offers or maybe a pipeline. So you, don't, you want to first check your code quality, maybe code standards, then run unit tests, then when unit tests run, create a new build to run browser tests, only if the previous ones succeeded. So you don't need to run all of them and just stop where they fail. Jenkins is really great for that. Uh, maybe you have, how many of you have really long running build, uh, test builds? Like half an hour or more? Only two, three? Okay. So for tests that take actually a long, long time to run, you can do automatic sharding across multiple nodes. So if your tests actually run 60 minutes, an hour, you can buy 10 containers. And so each one would be sharded into something like six or seven minutes. It's not going to be exactly six minutes because it has to load balance it a bit. And you can actually do that on Circle CI. So it's really easy to shard the tests and get much speed there. OK, but I don't know how many of you have noticed me talking about GitHub. Anybody? How many companies actually use GitHub? OK, nice. So 
Out of this three that work with GitHub, Jenkins works it with it. You need a small plugin. Circle CI is built for it. Travis is also built for it. But some people use Bitbucket. You can again run. Okay, nice. Few hands I saw. So you can run Jenkins again with a small plugin. And from a few months ago, you can run Circle CI too. Travis doesn't support uh, Bitbucket. Anybody using GitLab? Okay, so uh, GitLab now has its own CI, but before that, the only one you could use is Jenkins. Sorry for that. So I know that maybe some of these ideas will not stick to everybody since you might be using already GitLab and are not interested in moving away. But maybe you have a basic Git repo. Again, Jenkins is there for you. Well, actually, Jenkins is the only one that will work with anything you throw at it. Like, literally, you can run it on your own machine. Uh, this is an interesting idea for me. I never actually got the time to try it out. Uh, so, what I want to have in my continuous uh, integration is critical tests, like I really don't want to break payments or something, but also I have a lot of long-running tests. So whatever I change, sometimes I have to run the browser tests across the whole site, which might take hours. So what I want to split them into critical plus nice-to-haves. Maybe you are testing the third party tool, like, I don't know, you are uploading an image to Amazon, or some kind of payments, or maybe you have multiple uh, payment providers and you want to check every time that they are still working. Or just low browser tests. That was my pain point. It is my pain point. But we don't want to lose that quick feedback loop. Uh, so I work in a company where we ship stuff very often. We are currently at 12 uh, deploys a day from a team of five people. So we really don't want to have builds taking hours or half an hour or something like that. But also we really don't want to uh, lose the nice to have and the features that are not often used. Like, let's say you will probably not care if the frequently asked question page is broken. But you can run them like every hour. So you separate those tests. Let's say that you run critical on each push, just like you would usually, but nice, nice to have from time to time. The time to time can be once, once a day, once a week, every hour. It all depends on what's happening with how you prefer to do it. I was actually talking to a friend that's doing a similar thing now, and they're actually loving it. And I'm really eager to try it out, so try it out too. It's, I think this might be a really good thing. And that's something that you can do with Jenkins. Because Jenkins can not only react on, sorry, can not only react on pushes, but it has cron support. So every minute, every hour, every seven hours, once a day, once a week, every third Tuesday of a month, whatever you want. OK, any questions on this part? Still no questions? OK. Okay, so the question is, if the nice-to-have tests fail, how to respond? It's going to depend on you and your company. You can do a Slack notification to the team or hip chat or send an email with broken build, uh, urgent something, and then you can decide. Uh, maybe you're running a website in 10 languages in 15 countries. 
Maybe you really don't care to fix it for like, I don't know, French version in Poland. Like maybe you'll fix it today, tomorrow, next week, something like that. It's something that you have to think of. Any more? Nothing? Okay. So now I want to talk about some of the cavities that you have to take care of and be really, really careful about. So there's a thing called clean builds or clean builds versus performance is the first issue I'm going to talk about. So clean build means that there are no artifacts from previous runs. So because sometimes when you're running your tests, you will forget to clean the database, clean the cleans the file system from whatever happened in the last run. So in the clean build, what you want is to start each build from scratch. It means every time it starts from step zero, no artifacts. But the problem is that it takes time to set up. So let's say you every time have to install PHP, Nginx, MySQL database, set up fixtures, download something from your other servers or st some stuff like that. Uh, so Travis and CircleCI start with clean builds and actually offer caching of some of the dependencies. So we are somewhere in the middle because, for instance, we are using 200 megabytes of composer vendor files. We don't really want to install them every time. We just cache them. And then when we run composer install, it's going to see the differences and say, OK, I need to install this, 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 this. It's going to install it, cache it. For the next run, it doesn't have to do it again. But dirty builds are something very, something that often happens with Jenkins because people are not aware that one build can influence another one. Uh, it can continue where the last one stopped. So maybe you have broken data. Uh, it can reuse stuff from previous runs. Uh, but it's good that you don't have to install any libraries again, like Composer or anything else again. So for the performance side, it's really nice. But you can have dirty data. And that can be painful for false positives. Like, let's say, you're trying to uh, create a thumbnail of an image, and you have a functional test for it. But you didn't delete the thumbnail from the previous run. So what can happen is that your test will fail because the thumbnail cannot be written, and you'll think that you broke something with it, while the error is actually a stupid permission on file system. Uh, or the worst one is that your thumbnail generation fails, but the thumbnail is there, and you think, well, everything's OK. And of course, production stops working. So try to watch out if you're, doing, if you're working on Jenkins. Watch out and clean, it, clean the stuff before and after build. Uh, one thing that sometimes people have issues with is parallel builds. Uh, if you don't use stuff like Docker there, one build can influence the other one because they are actually running on the same server. So if you're using the same database, one test might delete all users while the other one sets them up and then expects to have a user. OK, so let's say that you want to have continuous delivery. That means one click to deploy. Now that we can a build, when that now that we can create a build for master, we save it somewhere, and we can deploy it from a phone using one button. So literally, let's go for a beer, log in somewhere, click a build, and continue drinking beers. Or you can actually do, give that to your marketing team because they want to deploy the new landing page at 9 p.m. and you actually want to sleep. 
or something. Jenkins is good for that. Unfortunately, Circle CI and Travis CI are soft are platforms. They don't have buttons like that. Uh, actually, what we did in TicketSwap until a few months ago, we were using GitHub's, no, no, not GitHub's, uh, Hubot. So on Slack, what we would do is say, Rambo deploy something to somewhere. Don't ask what's PDF and what's pizza. Uh, and Rambo, was a hu Rambo is a Hubot that can then react. So instead of using the one click button, we can be still drinking beers, open our Slack, say Rambo deploy something. Oh, sorry. Uh, we are using a Capistrano, so Capistrano is that. And a minute or two later, Rambo says deployment is done. That's it. You can do it from a bus. But then, you're maybe interested in what I said about continuous deployment. So why would we even think about that? For the last few months, we decided to go to continuous deployment and just see how it works. For us, one of the pain points happened was now we have seven or eight developers. So when somebody gives you like a two thumbs up on your review, you have to merge it to the master. OK, that's going to take like 10 seconds. But then our tests take eight minutes. Plus, creation of build takes another three or four minutes. So you're actually waiting on a Slack channel for 12 minutes to deploy something. Or, as we would most usually do, just forget to deploy. And then somebody that comes at the end isn't deploying one feature anymore, but four or five. So we decided to just deploy. OK, the tests say green, just deploy to production. And we're actually loving it. So try it out. It's really, really nice thing. And you can do it with all three of them. OK. Sometimes when you're setting up the whole build process, you're doing it for the first time, or you're maybe installing something new, using something new, you'll have to debug the build. So sometimes I had to do it with commits. Like, OK, let's try this. Let's try this. Then wait three minutes to see if, the, if Nginx was installed properly. Why wouldn't we just SSH into the build and use it just as we would use any other server? So, or we want to get some logs, files, to check how our build was or what failed and stuff like that. So with Jenkins, it's your server, so you can set it up as you want. It's your ops people that will allow you or disallow you to access it. Travis introduced a few months ago a debug command, which you have to set into your Travis YML, and then the execution of the run will stop. You go to their website, and they offer you a console to log you in so that you can check what's happening then and there. Also, if you want to check logs and save them, or artifacts of some kind, you can set up AWS and just push it to your bucket. With CircleCI, you actually get a button that says enable SSH to build, to this build. It will create, it will open an SSH con uh, connection uh, port, and all you have to do is just copy paste the command. That's it. And I'm in my build at that moment. But I also want to access logs and artifacts directly. So what CircleCI does is, after each build, you can say, save data from these folders. So if my test fails for something stupid, or I want to see my symphony error logs or something, I tell them, OK, these logs have to go to this folder, and I can access them easily. Sorry, you probably don't see it, but this is test errors log. That's it. 
out directly from the, their web. Okay, there are some software as a service warnings. Uh, they change dependencies independently of you. So everybody in the world is going to use the same image as you, which sometimes is not something that you and or your company want. So sometimes you want a newer version. Maybe you want newer version of, not PHP, that supported, uh, newer version of Nginx, Elasticsearch, Mongo, MySQL, or something. So instead of using their already pre-installed, you have to install your own. That's going to take half a minute, a minute, something like that. Not a popular thing sometimes. But much worst part is when they install a newer version and your app stops working. With CircleCI, it happened to us two months ago. Over the weekend, they decided to migrate for, from MySQL 5.6 to 5.7, and our application broke. Uh, we are using some group by query that's not really popular, and it was uh, forbidden from 5.7 something, so we had to hack it a bit. But the problem is that it stopped working on Monday morning at 9 a.m. when a colleague of mine was pushing CSS to production. And our builds, so we cannot create build if tests failed. So be ready for issues like that from time to time. Sometimes they don't announce all the changes in advance. It's a shared resource. So your performance or build times might vary a lot. So I was talking to somebody yesterday and they said we are testing that our API is returning, is running that quickly. Like it has to return in 10 milliseconds, something. You cannot do it with CircleCI or Travis because you, it's a shared resource. It will always depend, maybe you get to a very slow machine so your tests will be much slower than usually. Also, sometimes you will need some ops knowledge. Not for basic PHP unit, PHP spec stuff, but if you want to install some special Elasticsearch, MongoDB, Redis, whatever, customized, it's not going to be like click, 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 done. It will all depend, you will need some ops knowledge. But there are some good parts. They take care of underlying infrastructure. So if you have one test server in your company, and let's say it decides to die, you're pretty screwed, at least until you can fix it, which means that your, your development can't work, will not work. Here, they take care of it. You one of the servers breaks, well, they have hundreds or thousands, so you're, you just don't care. Uh, you want to scale 10 times on demand. You want to try something out like, hey, let, why don't we run this on 10 servers? Click, 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 and you can have it that evening. Or maybe you're doing a big refactor and you want a lot of builds this week. So instead of buying five new servers that will not come that day, you can just increase the number of builds. All of your developers can push fast. And in a week, you say, OK, let get me back to the usual amount of builds. But they also notify you when other stuff is not working properly. Anybody ever notice GitHub going down? But it's not only GitHub that goes down. Sometimes GitHub goes totally down, but sometimes that's just some of the APIs don't work. But sometimes Amazon or Heroku deployments are not available. I don't know if anybody's using that. So they take care of that and give you like a big red notice, GitHub is down, please wait for something. 
and you really don't want to debug your Jenkins seeing why is there no builds coming. Is our network broken? Is our server broken? Is GitHub down? Is this? Is that? But self-hosted also has a lot of good parts. Uh, we moved from Jenkins four months ago to Circle CI, but our Jenkins server was actually some really, really good machine. So on one of the side projects where we are doing something with PDFs and some software, the build would take, uh, tests would take on Jenkins six minutes, on Circle CI 18 minutes. Because, well, actually somebody bought a really good server with a lot of memory and with multiple cores that you can use. So the tests ran much, much quicker than usually. Can be a really nice thing depending on your project. Uh, yeah, you can add more than one CPU. On both Travis and Circle, you're actually limited to one CPU. You can't go and ask them, okay, can you give me more than one CPU? But you can also distribute uh, work across slave servers. So you're not limited to actually having one Jenkins server. Well, you have to have one Jenkins master. But you can buy 100 servers and run 100 slaves. So even if you have like 2,000 developers, it's going to be probably enough. Questions? Nothing? Okay. Yeah, so are there any differences differences when it comes to the number of technologies these CIs uh, support besides PHP? Uh, for Jenkins, it's your server, so you can install whatever you want. For CircleCI and Travis, I think that they support everything from Ruby, Python, Java, okay, not .NET, sorry. It's a Linux container. Uh -huh. But actually, I think that on CircleCI, you can do macOS builds for iPhone and some for Android. Not sure if you can do it on Travis. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, not sure if you can run Haskell. Sorry, never needed it. Yeah, uh, do you want to share the source code of Rambo? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, it's actually Hubot. So that's it. Uh, you can Google it. I don't know if it's GitHub or Etsy. So it's open source project. We just renamed it Rambo. I have a question about Travis. Uh, do you know how to make your builds uh, as fast as, fos as possible? Maybe it is possible to use a Docker on Travis or something? What? A Docker on Travis or something like that? Travis has multiple environments. I think they have actually like four of them now. And each has pros and cons. So they actually have Docker as a container. And those builds are blazing fast. Like they start in two seconds. But it has a pain point that you cannot use sudo. So if you need to install Nginx or something, you have to not use root access. So it's a bit of a pain point. There is a hack for it, but I haven't actually tried it. Uh, if you're using the older infrastructure, which is, I think, just virtual boxes or something, or KVM or something like that. The build to start can take like 30 seconds, maybe 45, because they have to actually boot the machine up. Uh, in Travis, in the older environments, you can run Docker inside of it. In the Docker containers, I don't think so, because of the pseudo rights. But I didn't try it out, sorry. Uh, you can also run Docker on CircleCI. I've played with that, with creating builds, but there are issues. There are some issues, so you can run Docker images very easily, 
but there are issues with creating a build. Okay. So if uh, you have internal uh, environment and uh, you need to connect to VPN, for example, uh, your company uh, has uh, internal infrastructure, the only solution is uh, Jenkins for now, or um, is there an option for uh, Travis or... Uh okay, so as I said, you can use Travis and Circle on-premise. You can buy it as a software from them, just as you can buy GitHub Enterprise but I have no idea what's the price. Thank you. Okay, uh, not me, but uh, a colleague has prepared a test, of, um, uh, let's say functional, with Selenium. It uh, uh, plays a role of user clicking on the map, something, yes? And we uh, integrated it into Jenkins. Is it possible to do it uh, on the others? Yeah, out of box. So I use Behat that actually has the Selenium driver. So in my builds on Circle and on Travis, all that you actually have to do is download the Selenium and say run. It has Firefox Chrome browser in it, both of them, and they run the XVFB driver, the headless mode. So it's actually easier than on Jenkins. Any more? Um, I have a question about uh, continuous deployment. Um, if all tests pass, then we automatically deploy uh, all unit functional acceptance test. But what if this uh, scenario works 98% of the times, but sometimes there is some branch that I know that cannot be tested automatically. I know it requires some manual testing, so I can mark it and say, okay, this job, after it builds, it still requires me um, manual deployment, you know, like something like that. Is this kind of scenario possible if, of any of this three? Oh, so only for specific runs, like yeah, when you change JavaScript on admin. Like yeah, specific so. branch. I know that specific this branch. Specific branch or specific build. So when I say, let's say we, you're, you have a website with front end and admin and you uh -huh. change some JavaScript in the admin, but you don't have like clicking tests. You want only to mark those commits or builds like don't deploy them or? Yeah, I want to mark specific, uh, specific commits as don't deploy them, oh. specific branch. Uh, probably you could do that, something like that, but I've never done it. You can, you can maybe uh, look at the last commit message and see if there's uh, some string in it, mm -hmm. not deploy it. And then okay. just have an if, if in git com last git commit something, don't do that. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, very nice subject, good presentation. Uh, Thank you. I think the solution for uh, guy, uh, my, my uh, guy that talked before me could be tax, because in uh, Travis you can deploy based on tax. So each time you pass a tag, you can make uh, a deploy. So each build that will detect a tag can trigger a deployment and only that build. Okay, but then you are actually deploying releases, not. Yes, Not but uh, I personally tested stuff and I added some extra conditions. And let's say from some cases I used tax, on some cases I used master because you can provide multiple uh, deployments. So you can set multiple deployment providers for, for one build in Travis. Okay, cool. Thank you. 
Okay, so one more question. Uh, we have Jira uh, in the company, so uh, which of these three uh, are compatible with Jira to change the uh, task status, for example? Sorry. <laughs> uh, probably the fourth one, Bamboo, since it's a Atlassian thing, so. But I don't see how the Jira issues are. Okay, well, actually, oh, crap. Uh, we would actually like that, too. So that, because now that we are continuously deploying, we are too lazy to move the issues from somewhere to done. So it would, be, it, it would actually help us, too. So if you find it, please find me on Twitter and tell me. Uh, I think we are out of time, but also out of questions, at least the public ones. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you're looking...